Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically the Pittsburgh Steelers Draft based on analytics. Uh, this video, we're going to go over all of the production and athleticism data on all of the picks that the Steelers selected to give you somewhat of an idea on what their potential is long term based on the data over many, 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 many decades worth of draft classes. Uh, so if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, so if there's anything that I talk about today that you're not familiar with, you can go there. If there's any other questions you have, just leave a comment below. Uh, but this, of course, is going to be my second draft class grades for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The other one, you can look up 2017 NFL Draft Analytics Steelers, and you should find that video as well if you want to see what the grade said about the Steelers draft class last year. This year, we're going to look at 2018. So first off, when you look at the first pick of the draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they selected Terrell Edmonds, defensive safety out of Virginia Tech. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 92.66 solo tackle score, 79.13 interception score and a 53.66 pass deflection score um, based on his production data he looks more like a pro bowl potential safety than an all pro safety but still pretty solid all-around profile when it comes to his production data uh, when you look at the averages of the position this is the only area where he runs into some issues doesn't his pass deflection data doesn't really line up with the pro bowl averages or the starter averages but Still, strong profile in terms of solo tackle, strong profile in terms of interceptions. And I think in many ways, he just has kind of a classic strong safety production, uh, you know, uh, look to him based on the data. And then, of course, when you get to his athleticism data, which I think is one of the big reasons why the Steelers drafted him, 99.30 uh, in terms of explosive or body strength score and 95.30 in terms of his speed score. All very, very, very high marks and pretty much hit all pro to pro bowl potential. Did not do any flex flexibility testing, so we don't really know much about that because he didn't do the short shell. He didn't do the three count uh, to kind of determine what his balance is for his size. But definitely very explosive and very fast. Pretty solid pick. I know uh, there have been kind of mixed reviews on that selection, but I think when you look at the production and you look at the athleticism testing, I think there's a very good shot that Terrell Edmonds, at worst, is just going to be a very, very athletic uh, starting safety for you. Then of course, you get to the next pick of the draft, which is James Washington, wide receiver out of Oklahoma State. Uh, very strong uh, production profile for the most part, 73.74, which pretty much hits above the three-time Pro Bowl and long-term starter range. So pretty above average production uh, for him. And on top of that, when you look at the averages at the position, this is the only area where there's some concern, but not a ton, uh, is not exactly within the All-Pro average or the Pro Bowl average. Uh, since the 1969 NFL draft class, but definitely is pretty darn close to the starter average. And in terms of athleticism testing, t did pretty well for himself. 83.75 in terms of explosiveness, 83.12 in terms of speed, and 53.80 in terms of flexibility for his size. All those marks are pretty decent, and you only really need to have one 54 or higher athleticism trait in order to be an all-pro slash pro bowl wide receiver. And he has two and explosiveness and speed. So I think this is a very good shot that James Washington becomes a successful wide receiver for the Steelers in the future. Then we get to the third round, uh, or at least the, the third pick for the Steelers and Mason Rudolph, quarterback out of Oklahoma State. Very strong production profile coming out in terms of high school production and FBS production. Uh, pretty much hit all the marks you're looking for in terms of uh, starter and Pro Bowl potential when you look at his, his best single season production traits. And then when you get to his career FBS score, very good, pretty much hits above the all-pro career threshold uh, when it comes to his career production. Uh, and then when you look at the averages, not quite near the, the average all-pro score, so he's not above what most all-pro players usually score in terms of their career production, but definitely above the Pro Bowl score and above the starter score. I think in many ways Mason Rudolph is one of those guys in this class that is one of the quarterbacks that kind of gets lost in the sauce but has potential to become a long-term starter to Pro Bowl level quarterback. I think he was a pretty good pick as a guy that could potentially be that. He may not end up being that, though, um, because of various different reasons. But the bottom line is I think he's a guy that has a very good chance of becoming a successful player. And I think that you should be pretty excited about that. Uh, and then, of course, you get to the offensive tackle 
Uh, Chuck Wuma Core 4 from Western Michigan. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, he's had a 20.78 explosive lower body strength score, a 47.48 speed score, and a 72.43 flexibility score. Doesn't quite look like an all-pro level player or even Pro Bowl player because of missing the mark in terms of explosion and missing the mark in terms of uh, speed to a certain extent, but definitely has a pretty solid starter profile. The only issues you see is when you get to the averages, you know, you look at the all-pro average, pro bowl average, and even the starter average. He's kind of below what the average explosion score is for a starter, below what the average speed score is for a starter. So that's definitely is somewhat of a concern with him. But I do think that there's strong enough traits on paper that he could end up becoming a long-term starter. It's just a matter of if he translates or if he doesn't translate. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see what exactly happens with him. Then, of course, we get to Marcus Allen, a defensive safety out of Penn State. Uh, when you get to his production traits, 81.68 in terms of solo tackle data, 30.68 in terms of interception, and 48.25 in terms of pass deflection. Doesn't quite hit the uh, Pro Bowl or All Pro level in terms of the bottom and thresholds in terms of production. We look at the averages at the position. Again, below what the average score is for a Pro Bowl player in terms of pass deflection and in terms of interception and also below in terms of starter. That's the only big issue with Marcus Allen. Um, he just doesn't really have the traits indicative of a high quality player uh, when it comes to production. And then when you get to his athleticism traits, this is another area where he runs into some issues. Uh, doesn't quite have the flexibility testing of a Pro Bowl player. Um, very good explosion for his size but doesn't quite have the flexibility testing of a Pro Bowl player, but could become a long-term starter. I think in many ways you're looking at a guy that could have a similar career uh, to, you know, there's a lot of different guys, but for the most part, he definitely could become a long-term starter because he has relatively high solo tackle data and high explosion data, but there is still a chance that he could also uh, end up being uh, either a bust or just a backup because of some of his issues with the production and his issues with athleticism data. Uh, then, of course, we get to Jalen Samuels, uh, tight end, which is what he was listed at when he was drafted out of North Carolina State. He's kind of a h back -y running back slash wide receiver type guy. Bottom line is, when you look at his production data, um, does, didn't really hit the all-pro threshold, but did hit above the Pro Bowl threshold with a 57.21 market share production score. Uh, and then when you get to the averages, this is the only issue with him, is he doesn't quite hit near the average for a starter Pro Bowl or All Pro player in terms of his production, and when you get to his athleticism data, this is the only positive with him is he does have Pro Bowl slash All Pro athleticism traits for his size: 47.60 in terms of explosion, 87.14 in terms of speed, and 83.52 in terms of flexibility. I think in many ways, when you look at Jalen Samuels, you're looking at a guy that could be a fringe Pro Bowler uh, potentially uh, because of his athleticism traits. And he's, again, another guy that's just kind of weird. He's, he's not a guy that's going to be an inline blocker ever because of his size. You know, this guy is not 6'5". He's not 6'4", even. Um, he's just a relatively small guy. Uh, but the bottom line is I do think he is kind of a fun piece um, for the Steelers' offense to play with because of all the positives that he does have in terms of his athleticism traits. And then the last player that the Steelers drafted uh, was Joshua Frazier, defensive tackle out of Alabama. And when you get to his production data... It's not a lie, not productive, 4.72 in terms of solo tackle data, 1.80 in terms of sacks, and 1 in terms of uh, TFL data. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, or even starter threshold. When you look at the averages at the position, not even near that, way below average. And then, of course, when you look at his athleticism traits, even here it doesn't look that great. 17.13 in terms of explosion, 42.23 in terms of speed, and 46.30 in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, flexibility for his size. Uh, so in many ways, Joshua Fraser, at best, is athletic upside as a starter. But when you add in his production and you add in his athleticism, I think it's going to be very unlikely that Joshua Fraser becomes a long-term starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the future. He is a later round pick, but that's just to let you guys know that not a high chance of becoming a successful player. So overall, when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers draft class, I really like this draft class I think when you look at the quarterback and wide receiver I think that's the big thing that buys it for me uh, I think Terrell Edmonds has a good chance to kind of uh, buck the trend that a lot of people I mean it depends on who you talk to of course some people love the pick some people hate the pick but I do think that he's a solid pick from an athleticism and production standpoint I think uh, Chuck Wuma has a good chance to be a starter I think Marcus Allen could potentially be a starter but not really high quality outcomes I think Jalen Samuels has a chance to be a starter to 
something better if they use him the right way. Joshua Frazier is the only kind of dead on arrival pick, but when you look at the picks collectively, I do like this class. I do think there's a lot of potential here. And ultimately, uh, I'm, I mean, I don't really do grades, but I, 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 all I can really say is that there's a lot of players in this draft class that have pretty good data, pretty good analytics, and have a pretty good shot of becoming successful players. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. If you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.